The following is a New Jersey Network News special presentation. Governor Jim Florio, State of the State Address. Good evening and welcome to this New Jersey Network News special, the State of the State Address. Governor Florio is about to deliver from the War Memorial in Trenton his first State of the State message. But before we go to State House correspondent Larry Stupnagel, a programming update for this evening's NJN coverage. Beginning at 7.30 after the governor's address, it's New Jersey Network News. Then at 8, NJN's coverage continues with the Republican response to the governor's speech. And at 8.30, New Jersey Tonight. Now we go to the War Memorial and Larry Stupnagel. Larry? Well, Kent, everybody here is anxiously awaiting the arrival of Governor Florio. He's scheduled to be here in just a moment, where, as you said earlier, he Mr. will President, deliver his first State of the State message. The we now have the uh, word down on the podium that uh, Speaker Joe Doria has just told Senate President John Lynch that the governor is indeed in the chamber. And very shortly, we will be seeing the governor make, governor make his entrance. And in just a few moments after that, we will also, of course, hear his first State of the State message. Down on stage right now, of course, we have the Senate President John Lynch announcing the committee that is escorting the governor. The governor is entering the room. We'll go down on the floor if we can. Pick that up. There's the governor entering right now. State police escort. Wife Lucinda with him. Uh, she is seems to me always with him at these moments of importance. She was with him uh, during his budget message, during his inaugural address, during his auto insurance message, and now at a time of great need for the governor because he finished his last year, of course, not exactly uh, high in the popularity polls. As a matter of fact, he was setting near records for being at the bottom of popularity polls. That, of course, over his $2.8 billion tax program. The governor there pausing to say hello to former Governor Richard Hughes, who came here to hear the speech tonight. The governor going up on stage, getting some warm applause from this, of course, democratically partisan audience. But we also see some Republicans applauding down there. Governor Florio now going to the stage to deliver his first State of the State message. Standing applause. This must be giving him a little boost since uh, there was some question as to just how much of a response, how much of a positive response the governor would be receiving tonight, given the fact that he's had some revolt within his own party. But now let's go down onto the stage and Governor Jim Florio's State of the State message. everyone. Tonight, we're here to talk about the state of the state. But first, I'd like to pay tribute to some very important people who are here that we're proud of. In the audience with us are some wives and parents of New Jerseyans who have been called to duty in the Middle East. It's, of course, an anxious time for the families of those who are preparing for a war that we pray will not come. Lucinda and I are thinking about her sister, Joanne, who's in Saudi Arabia with the Air Force. The people here with us reflect the bravery of those who serve and those who are back home waiting. Let's have them stand and be recognized, please. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> Senate President Lynch, Speaker Doria, members of the Senate, the Assembly, and to all of you out there who are listening and watching. Just about a year ago, I stood in this building and I took my oath of office. 1990, to say the least, was not a year for the faint-hearted. <laughs> I 
there was a lot of controversy. Much of it because we had to raise taxes. That's never an easy thing to do. We moved much faster than many people were prepared to move. Some say we didn't explain what we did as well as we could have. And there may be some truth to that. But the steps that we took prepare us to move ahead. To make 1991 the year when we deliver on the promises of 1990 and find new ways to make life better for our people. Tonight, I stand here proud of New Jersey and its people. Proud of what we've done to prepare for our future. I know a lot of people are worried about that future. Let me tell you about a young couple I know, Greg and Anne. Like a lot of couples their age, they both work. They have two lovely children. They've just bought a house, an old house, that needs a lot of fixing up. Their lives are a constant juggling of work schedules and childcare. Late at night, when the kids are asleep, they spend their little spare time painting upstairs. Greg happens to be my son, but he could be anybody's son. He's nervous about the future. Who wouldn't be? But he's not alone. In Middlesex Borough, the Catano family that I visited wonders how to save for their children's education. The Rogers family in Wayne thinks about what kind of schools await their new baby, Peter. Down in Absecon, the Labellos hope that their home will be the retirement nest egg that they once thought it would be. Change is sweeping the world, and it's very unsettling. A national recession puts prosperity and opportunity to the test. People everywhere want to know, is government on my side or in my way? People have the right to ask these questions. But let me make it very clear. In New Jersey, we're prepared with answers. Yes, I know that the prophets of doom and gloom want to hang out a sign that says, welcome the hard times. Well, I'm not buying that. As far as I'm concerned, they can hang their signs somewhere else. Because in New Jersey, we worked too hard last year to make this state a good place to live. We're ready. We made choices that others are just starting to face up to. In 1991, we're the strongest state in the nation. Our credit rating is number one in the nation. Businesses are moving in. We're going to grow and build and create jobs for people who want to work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in 1990, we laid a firm foundation for 1991. And more important, we're ready to deliver on our promises because we listened and we changed the things that needed changing like car insurance, my top priority when I took office. 
with help from leaders like Senator Ambrosio and Assemblyman Bryant and Adubato, we took the insurance companies out of the driver's seat and put the people back in. I am very happy to tell you that the law that I signed last year makes sure that as of April 1st, every policy written or renewed in New Jersey will have something missing. $220 per car. That's the JUA surcharge we got rid of. Some insurance companies are fighting us in the court, but the state of New Jersey will keep standing on the side of our drivers. And, and our commissioner, Commissioner Fortunato, won't sit back and let the savings we fought for be washed away by rate increases for good drivers. That's the commitment that we've made. With people like Senator Weiss and Assemblyman Watson, we took on the fight against the most unfair burden that we face, property taxes. This year, we'll see the results. The big increases of the past decade will stop. Homestead rebates will go up for hundreds of thousands of our people. I'm calling on the legislature now to make sure that the hardworking homeowners and tenants of this state have their checks in hand by the 31st of July. We took direct action to help the middle class property tax payer. And I know that leaders like Speaker Doria and Senator Lynch won't just hope that that happens. They'll join me in making sure that we take the steps necessary to provide savings for you. The state Supreme Court declared our school funding system illegal and unconstitutional. So we passed laws that said that the quality of our children's education will not depend on the accident of where they happen to live. Every child is entitled to a quality education. But we made it very clear that taxpayers had to get something back for the extra money we're investing in our children's future. We're giving more, but we're expecting more. And not just from the students, but from everyone involved in teaching our kids. Commissioner Ellis and legislators like Senator Feldman, Assemblyman Naples, We'll make sure that our expectations are fulfilled. And our Quality Education Commission will keep looking at how we can make sure that our new system works better. And I'm looking forward to what it is that the Commission recommends to us. Meanwhile, I am eager to sign laws in 1991 that will make sure that the three R's are joined by the big A, accountability. We need new ways. We need new ways to measure our children's progress. We need tough ethical standards for our school officials. And we need an inspector general to take aim at corruption and waste. Ladies and gentlemen, a state that cracks down on those who pollute our water 
should do no less with those who steal from our children. In 1990, we started to take a long overdue look at state government. Our audit commission is showing us ways to save money, but it's also telling us that we can be smarter in the way that we do what needs to be done. So I'm announcing tonight that I've accepted the audit commission's recommendation to end the car inspection system as it now exists. We can contract with private firms and do only the air pollution testing that's required by federal law. We'll sacrifice nothing in safety. And for once, we'll be listening to the drivers of New Jersey who've been saying for years that something is wrong. And in working for a smarter government in 1991, we'll continue to move ahead. Starting with a hard look at how state government has to be reshaped, even redefined, to meet the real needs of real people. We'll keep in mind two goals. First, having government as small as it can be and still doing what it has to do. And second, making sure that what we do makes sense, common sense. And that means government should have the courage to do what it must do and the wisdom to get out of the way when someone else can do it better. Right now, right now, our government is like the fellow who drinks and smokes and eats too much and then wonders why his doctor is so upset. We have 19 departments in state government. We have more authorities and commissions than I can even name. Frankly, we have more than we need. Soon, I'll announce my proposals on how we can reduce the number of government departments and make government make sense. I'll listen to the suggestions of others in and out of government on how it is that we can do this. And then we'll, we'll reason together. The goal is to strike the right balance. In 1991, we'll find that balance by paying attention to what it is that needs doing most and doing it better. And in doing that, we can be leaner and still find new ways to meet people's needs. For example, we won't sit back and watch college costs grow out of reach for middle class families someone who went through Trenton State College on the GI Bill, I know it isn't always easy. And back then, tuition was only $150 a year. I want to follow, I want to follow the lead of Senator Dalton and Speaker Doria and their ideas to offer discounted savings bonds now to pay for college later. and to let people borrow up to $5,000 a year at fixed, reasonable rates. All parents want their children to go farther than they did, and they should never have to apologize for not being able to do enough. As far as I'm concerned, education is just another word for opportunity.
We also have to do more to help our people share in the American dream of owning a home. Home ownership is down in New Jersey, and we can change that. So I'm very pleased to announce tonight an agreement with the Federal National Mortgage Association, Fannie Mae. It will provide $250 million in reduced cost mortgages for middle class first time home buyers. We'll reduce upfront costs and put owning a home back in the reach of more of our people. And a revitalized home building industry will help us jumpstart the economy and create jobs. <laughs> Saving money is important. So is saving lives. We must renew our pursuit of safe streets and secure neighborhoods. Nothing means more to us and to our families. So cracking down on crime is high on our agenda. And that means fighting for a constitutional amendment sponsored by Assembly Members Ford and DeCroach to protect the rights of crime victims. And above all, I want a death penalty that doesn't just exist on paper. We have it, we should use it. <laughs> this should also be the year when we cure our seriously ill health care system. Too many people can't afford to get sick because it costs too much to get well. That's not acceptable. I want to work with the legislature on a solution that puts the brakes on costs and makes sure that everyone has access to quality care. I am especially concerned about our senior citizens. Last year, they paid $129 million out of their own pockets for costs above their Medicare and copayment. That's not acceptable either. For many of our younger people, there is no more important issue than childcare. As more mothers and fathers both work. They need a place where their children are safe and secure and where they get real learning at the stage in their lives when it does the most good. We are working on a major initiative to double our current resources for childcare so that more parents can have peace of mind and more children can have the good start in life that they need. In New Jersey, we will never let down our guard against polluters who threaten our water and air. And with the leadership of people like Senator Van Wagner, Assemblyman Smith, we did a lot in 1990. We collected record fines from polluters. We had the fewest beach closings and the best water quality in many a summer at the Jersey Shore, but we can do more, and we will. This year, our ocean stops being a septic tank, and we go back to having it as the precious resource that we love. Because on March 17th, we keep our pledge
to ban all dumping in the Atlantic Ocean. And this year, I want to sign a tough law that protects the shore once and for all from unreasonable development. <laughs> Perhaps as important as anything else that we do in 1991, I want state government to be a true partner with the business men and women whose skill and drive mean so much to this state. So I'm proposing that we call together an economic conference. Leaders from business and labor and both political parties will get together and map a strategy for keeping this state growing and selling our benefits to the entire world will soon be announcing an agreement with New York State to help cement this region's leadership position in the global marketplace. It will outline how our two states will work together to increase exports and bring more international business here. Ladies and gentlemen, government should be an engine that drives our economy not a weight that holds it back. Investment and work will mean jobs today and a secure future tomorrow. We can make those investments because we made the right choices in 1990. We kept New Jersey's AAA credit rating, highest in the nation. And you don't have to be a Wall Street tycoon to uh, get the benefit of that. What really counts is its impact on Main Street. It means jobs. It means saving millions of dollars as we get the capital to build roads and schools and bridges. Work that's been deferred too long Work that means keeping New Jersey's competitive edge far into the 21st century. <laughs> and with the help of people like Commissioners Downs and Zoffinger, we'll prime the pump of New Jersey's economy. Our people know how to work. They want to work, and there's work to be done to keep this state great. A national recession is the ideal time to invest in New Jersey, and we can. And that's why I'm going to be calling on the legislature to follow the lead of Senator Walter Wren and raise the cap on the Transportation Trust Fund. That step alone would mean 7,000 jobs. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to Atlantic City to talk about finally building a world-class airport there. More jobs. <laughs> Talking about jobs makes me feel good. Like it did when I was in Jersey City for the announcement by Tropicana Orange Juice of their building a manufacturing facility there. Like it did when I was in Piscataway where Pepsi-Cola broke ground for a bottling plant. More jobs. And in Mount Olive just last week, when our commitment to work with the business community brought the BASF Corporation there, thousands of more jobs. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I've got my shovel ready and I'll break ground in every corner of this state. Nineteen ninety was a year when a lot of people got involved. From my office, I could hear the drama unfold on the steps of the State House. One day, some people would come down and say, spend more money on arts, on the colleges, on agriculture. Another day, another group would come, just as vocal, just as committed, but insisting that we spend less on everything. A conflict? Sure. It's called democracy. <laughs> sometimes it's loud. Sometimes it's messy. But it works. I hope that you'll all stay involved in 1991. From the schoolhouse to the state house, wherever decisions are made that affect your lives, ask questions. Demand accountability. It's your government. It's your money. People don't have to agree on everything. But we can't be so paralyzed by differences that we ignore the challenges we face. So let me conclude by stressing again. 1990 was about investing. 1991 is about dividends. March 17th, no more ocean dumping. <laughs> April 1st, no more JUA surcharge. <laughs> July 31st, homestead rebates of up to $500. Tuition help for the middle class. Yeah. Home ownership for more of our people. Yeah. A more sensible inspection system. Yeah. Leaner government. New roads. <laughs> and jobs. <laughs> Let's all work together. There's a lot to do. We have something good here in New Jersey something that is worth keeping. I spoke earlier about a sign some people wanted to put up. Let's all of us join hands and put together a sign of our own. A sign that says, New Jersey works. Thank you. Oh. State of the State address before a packed house here at the War Memorial in Trenton, New Jersey.
Nowhere in the governor's speech tonight did he talk about repealing any of the elements of his $2.8 billion tax program. One element was repealed last year, that was the tax on heavy trucks and equipment, but Governor Florio seemed to be saying tonight he didn't have to back off on it. Instead, he, instead he said the state has made some hard choices that have left it in the best economic shape in the country. That's the situation down here in Trenton as Governor Florio leaves the chamber. I'm Larry Stupnagel reporting live. Let's go back to the studio now to Steve and Kent. All right, Larry, thank, thank Larry. you. And we're going to take a short break in our coverage of the State of the State Address. A special edition of New Jersey Network News coming up.